Welcome to this introduction to Improvement Science, the six core principles. Improvement Science is defined as a methodology that disciplines inquiries to improve practice and achieve quality outcomes reliably across diverse contexts. It is a systems level effort. It looks for achieving quality and productivity in diverse settings, and it attends to the contextual factors to facilitate quality improvement. Here's a video clip of Dr. Anthony Bryke explaining the rationale for embedding improvement science principles and processes into the field of education. This is the model for improvement from which we work in the networked improvement communities. Three overarching questions guide this model. The first question is, what are we trying to accomplish? And to answer this question, members define clear, measurable goals that they hope to achieve. The second question is, how will we know the changes in improvement? To answer this question, members operationally define the expectations, proficiency criteria, behaviors, performances, etc., that they expect to see as a result of implementing the change. The final question is, what change can we make that will result in an improvement? And to answer this question, members explore research and other promising practices that may help address their problems of practice toward achieving their goals. Members use rapid cycles of inquiry, or PDSA cycles, to test these change ideas in their classrooms or schools. These PDSA cycles allow members to describe and define the change idea, execute the change, collect and study the ongoing data to determine progress and efficacy, and then make the decision to adapt, adopt, or abandon the selected change. Once change ideas are adopted, plans begin to implement, spread, and scale the positive changes throughout the system. This is a great infographic from the Institute of Education Sciences that details how a systemic improvement science approach can help us address the opportunity and achievement gaps in our current educational system. And on this slide are the factors that are essential to our improvement efforts. These include understanding why we need to improve, having the data and feedback mechanisms to measure improvement, designing or selecting change ideas that will result in improvements, testing change ideas using rapid iterative PDSA cycles, and knowing when and how to fully implement, spread, and scale improvements. Next, let's explore the improvement science principles and processes we use in our NICs. The first improvement principle is to make the work problem-specific and user-centered. And this entails leveraging multiple sources of data, visualizing the, ex the existing system, so using systems, processes, and flow maps, and truly understanding user experiences. And this can be accomplished using such things as surveys or empathy interviews, student journey maps. The second improvement principle is focus on variation in performance and processes. So while some variation is expected in any system, we should expect some quality um, in responsive education, regardless of the sites or the providers. And so that entails intending to rather than controlling for variation. So variation is the problem we are trying to solve with improvement science. And that includes variation in processes and outcomes to provide information about how our system is working or not working. This leads into the next improvement principle, which is seeing the system that produces the current outcomes. So every system is perfectly designed to get the results it gets. And if we're not seeing the results we want, then we have to really examine, analyze, and understand how the system is working in order to make improvements. And in this TED Talk by Atul Gawande, he um, does a good job of describing how systemic efforts can aim toward positive change. In the network improvement community, members work from a shared working theory of improvement, which describes the theorized causal pathway from the promising change ideas to the goals and including the relationship between the components. And the driver diagram is used to illustrate the components, which include a shared goal or aim, primary and secondary drivers, which are believed to impact that goal, and the change ideas, which are believed to hold potential promise for helping reach the goal. And this is a sample driver diagram that includes the components that were just described. Here's a short video clip that explains driver diagrams using a basic example. Feel free to stop at the 4 minute and 20 second point or view the entire video if you are so inclined. 
The fourth improvement principle relates to practical measurement. So we cannot improve what we cannot measure. And in improvement science, our measures are for learning, understanding variation, and process improvement process improvement aligned to the actual work. So these are practical, formative, low stakes, inexpensive measures that are integrated into daily instruction and systems work. Transparency, safety, and trust are the norm and risk-taking is absolutely encouraged to expedite this learning. And data is produced and analyzed in a timely manner, analyzed frequently, and adjustments are made based on this learning. And this video clip helps explain the types of measurements we employ in the NICS, that is measurement for improvement, using a variety of practical measures for both processes and outcomes. And this video explains in greater depth how measurement for improvement differs from measurement for accountability or research. The fifth improvement principle is use disciplined inquiry. So often we need to adapt or innovate using improvement research methods to get the results we need using practice-based evidence. That is evidence that is generated in the classroom or in the school. And so practitioners use a plan, do, study, act or PDSA iterative improvement cycle to learn, adapt and develop confidence in the efficacy and the reliability of an idea. So rather than just adopting something as this works, we are looking for how does it work? So what works for whom, in which circumstances? So as was mentioned in the NICS, members use iterative plan to study act cycles of inquiry to test promise and change ideas in practice. These videos provide detailed information about how exactly these occur. And this supplemental graphic depicts what the PDSA cycle of inquiry actually entails. So during cycles of inquiry, members continually refer to the three overarching questions mentioned earlier from our model for improvement as they make decisions about whether to adapt, adopt, or abandon specific change ideas. And this graphic depicts how we use small scale tests of change first with the rapid PDSA cycles to explore the efficacy of a change idea in practice before fully exploiting it or spreading and scaling it across contexts. 